So I don't know if you guys have a problem with tire poke where you live. Here it can be a bit hit or miss with local law enforcement. What I thought would be a really cool video is showing you guys how to put the Wrangler fender extensions on to a Gladiator. On the Wranglers, you can get the Extreme Recon uh, fender extensions because you can order it with 35 inch tires and wider tires, but you can't get that on a Gladiator. Came across a really cool post on the Gladiator forums showing us how to put the Extreme Recon fenders from Jeep onto a Gladiator. So that's what we're gonna be doing today on the Demonator. It doesn't look like it's a very hard install and it's also quite cost effective because the fender extensions or what do they call them? Fender splats or slats or whatever they are from the dealer are uh, dependent, well, I don't know, in Canadian and if you can get a bit of a discount, it was like around 100, 150 bucks for a set of four of them. I've got some wider axles coming for the Demonator and when we put our lift on larger tires and wider axles, we're gonna have some tire poke. We don't have any here from the factory and so I've been trying to figure out what is gonna be a, the best solution for that. I've been uh, lucky enough to kind of get away with the tire poke that we have on the Eco Diesel for now. Uh, only a little tiny bit poking out the sides and I don't have any mud flaps on here which is something else that I'm gonna have to put on the Demon because, uh, the Demonator, because we're gonna have much larger tire, well, much larger. We've got 37s on the Wrangler. We're gonna put 40s on the Demonator. So we're gonna put some mud flaps on as well. Show you what I ordered and uh, what White Rock Dodge brought in for me. I've got it sitting in the garage, but it's gonna give us, you know, about this much more coverage right over here. So we're gonna get a little bit more coverage when our tires stick out a little bit more. Probably not gonna get full coverage over the tires, but it's gonna look a lot better and hopefully that avoids us any complications with the police. So, uh, I've already unboxed one of them, but these here are the fender extensions. They're just little plastic pieces. Um, they're, in, I don't know, depending on how much of a dealer discount you get, or if you're paying a Canadian American, they're about, uh, I think they're about 20 or 30 bucks each. So for around a hundred bucks or so, you can get a set of these and they come with, they'd probably be a lot cheaper if they didn't come with all this all this packaging in plastic. So let me show you how, let me show you how these are gonna work. Now, this is the front, this one here is the front passenger side. And basically, we pull out these plastic rivets and we've got holes in the fender extensions. And then we just put the plastic rivets back on and we get that extra little bit of coverage over the fender. Now, if you're wondering how we put these on for the rear, um, I'll put a link down in the description to the thread on the Gladiator forums if you want to see what everybody's talking about, but I'm going to try to show you the best I can in this video how to do this. But if we get the fronts for the rear on the Gladiators, because the Gladiators have different shaped fenders, so you can't get the rear ones, they don't fit properly, they look weird. Um, it just needs a little bit of bending right here where my hand is in the corner. So we're gonna trim off a little bit of this material right here so that we can get a better bend in this. And the bottom should line up with the bottom of the fender and then we'll get coverage over the top of the tire. It's hard to see because it's not bent, but something a little bit like that, which when we add an extra two or three inches with our axles and tires, it'll look a little bit less ridiculous from a uh, from law enforcement perspective. But I think there's other practical benefits to doing this as well. Um, it's gonna help stop with uh, rocks coming up and uh, throwing rocks. A big problem with uh, these, with, with the Jeeps, especially when you put wider tires, is just destroying all of the paint on your rear fenders. Now they do come with a little bit of paint protection film on here, but it's, it's it doesn't cover the whole thing. and. I've got chips on the, I've got chips all over the white Jeep as well. And then the other thing is stone chips all on your, your hinges. Now what I did on the, the white Jeep, cause we've got the 37s on here that are uh, slightly wider. But what I did is I put some protective film. I just cut little squares of protective film and I put it right on the fronts of the hinges and it's kept a lot of the stone chips off of there. But you can see just how much stuff gets chucked up on the fenders. And so we're gonna we're gonna try to prevent that, but mostly 
because this is an off-road rig, you know, it's gonna get scratches and chips. Mostly it's to help us prevent or help prevent us from getting getting pulled over. And this is a pretty easy mod. It's cheap, like I said, it's only about a hundred bucks or so. Um, it's a pretty easy mod to do. Any, I think any of you guys can do it. We'll find out by the end of this video if I can do it. I'm not a mechanic, um, but I think any of you guys, if you can use a drill and a plastic rivet tool, you should be able to do this mod as well. And then we're gonna add on some, some of these mud flaps here. So I don't know if you guys, I wanna show you my address. My address? Yeah, my address right there. Hang on. <laughs> These are from a company called Rock Block. Um, I don't have any affiliation with them, but I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, these are four mud flaps. Now, the way their system works, I believe, and we'll put these on today, I'll show you guys, is that you can take these off with just a thumb screw. You can unscrew them and, and take them off. Um, these are their extra wide and extra long ones. So the rear ones are. This is as big uh, as they make. They do make some smaller ones that aren't uh, as long and wide. So if you don't have huge tires, we're gonna have 40 inch by 13 and a half inch tires. So we wanna get a bit of coverage on those rear wheels, especially cause the Jeep is gonna have to be quite lifted uh, to clear and have the clearance for those tires. Um, so I'm gonna put some mud flaps on to help prevent us from getting pulled over. So we'll throw these on today, but um, yeah, this is the most complicated tool in this install. This is a uh, plastic rivet tool, and I actually need to go to the store uh, and get some plastic rivets because I thought that I had, I thought I had them in this, this uh, plastic trim retainer kit that I had, but I, I don't have the ones I need. I'll show you them here in a sec. They're really easy, and then really easy to get out, and you can pop these rivets out, um, the factory rivets, like this is not, this is a, you don't have to drill or anything, you just get a little tool like this. And uh, you just can kind of come under here. This one I already kind of pulled out a bit. But they come out really easy, just like that. And they're these little, let's see if we can get focus on here. These little plastic guys here. And uh, they have a little stem on them on the end. And so when you pull it through with the plastic tool, it it expands out these, like it flares out these, these pieces on here, and then you cut off or it pulls off the, the stem as part of this. So on the rear, what we've got to do is, because the holes don't line up with those extreme recon fenders, we're gonna have to drill some new quarter inch holes, which shouldn't be too big a deal. We're just drilling some holes in the plastic frame. Now this won't work if you've done a fender chop because you need this plastic piece to attach to. But uh, we're gonna put some new holes that match up with the fenders for the rear. But, uh, but the fenders on the front, we won't have to at all. We'll just have to replace these rivets, which we've already done once because we had all the fender liners out over at Epic uh, when we did the engine swap. And uh, so we'll just have to pull these out and replace them with, with new ones and then we can attach attach our uh, extreme recon fenders. So I gotta run to the store real quick and get some plastic rivets, and then uh, we'll get started we'll get started on this. So let's fire up the, de the demonator. Okay, I picked up some of these Plastic rivets from uh, Princess Auto. Now, the uh, post on the forum says quarter inch plastic rivets, but uh, I'm hoping there's there's 40 in here. I'm hoping there's quarter inch uh, in here. So let's pop these open, see what we got. Hmm. These guys here look close to what we need size. Fortunately I had to buy 40 different sized ones. But this looks about the same length and thickness. So hopefully these guys are what we need. So we've got 10 of each. These will go in here like this. It'll lock in place. I don't want to wreck this one but 
basically it holds it and it pulls that pin through the middle and squishes this all out. So I don't want to wreck one because I don't have too many of these. We've got 20 of these quarter inch sized ones. And then we've got, these ones look, uh, these ones might do the job too. They're shorter, but they're the same thickness if we run out. But all these other ones are, these are skinny ones. These are, uh, oh, these ones aren't too bad either. We might be able to mix mash the plastic rivets if we run out. These are shorter, so they're not going to uh, go in as far. They're not as thick, but they have a, a head size that's more similar to what we have already. So let's use the ones that are close. These have a much larger cap on them. First, uh, let's get enough of these rivets out. Actually, we need the uh, fender flare. Let's uh, pull out the rivets that would be underneath this once we kind of mold this to fit. So let's pull all the ones out to, uh, looks like. I think we could probably leave this one here in, but I'll pull these ones out for now. Yeah, we can just leave this one last rivet in there. And then what we want to do is cut some reliefs so that we're not bowing this plastic out like that when we give it a bit of a bend here. Watched a few of these installs. Some people clip them like this, but then I saw somebody else cut some notches like this and put plastic rivets on each of the three or the two spikes and then on the edges and it really seemed to help keep it uh, tighter. Let's see if we can find the pictures, but here's, well that one is a little bit different, no, that's a furry, but we want this nice and low when we're done like this. That's what, it, if you don't cut them, well, I guess you can cut them really high, but we'll see how our rock block fender flares go on or mud flaps go on too. There's the part numbers, two front lefts, two front rights. That's what we ordered here. I'll post a link down in the description for you guys. I just want to see if we can find this photo. So there's another way to cut the relief. That's what we're trying to get rid of is some of this pop-up here. I don't know if they added extra holes to this or not. I believe they probably did. So I don't want to bend this too much to get any white plastic creases. So I think we'll cut it this way. Cut out some of the material right here. It's bowing out. Without going too far down. So we'll get our trusty snippers here. And we don't want to go too high. We can see they're kind of like just past this label. Wherever that went. Yeah, that's, so we don't want to crease this. If we keep bending this, it's going to crease, but let's take one more little notch out. And you know, these aren't too expensive if you screw it up, other than the pain, the, it's kind of a pain. You got to order some more. I'll deal with that later. So now, See if we keep pushing this, is it gonna completely crease? But we should be able to now, let's take some of our rivets. Let's see if we can use these shorties. If they'll hold behind these holes. Ooh. No, I think we wanna go with the bigger head ones. Take these bigger head ones out. Oh yeah, that'll work nice. So let's go put a couple on and see where we need to drill some holes. Oh, 
start from the bottom, which may require us drilling a, a hole to even get this started, because this first hole, if we use this first hole, it's going to make us line way up too high. So we want this as flush as we can get it, which I think is going to mean putting a new hole in here to even get this started. I don't think I would use the existing hole. Get a drill bit. We'll fit this one quarter. Should be perfect. Set this to drill mode. I want to use this bottom hole because probably going to keep it it's going to keep it as tight to the bottom of our fender as we can which means none of these holes at all line up so if we start from the bottom and we wrap our way around will be the best course of action for getting all this set up gonna mean I'm trying to get a hole perfect here but I think we can get the first hole here no problem put a hole right here never ever used this tool before so this is a bit of a learning experience but my understanding is I just put it on here ow that pinched my finger and didn't do anything <laughs> okay well Try this again. Oh, there we go. Got it. Okay. First one on. Great success. I'm thinking we put one up top and then we work on this draw in these holes to get this curved in nice and tight like that two in place now it kind of Holds it in and we can, I think, work on getting the other ones right in place. Look at that, that'll be nice and nice and tight. Once we get this, get a few of these put in here like that. There we go. There we go. Another one in. So that's, I mean, that's only three, three rivets in there. And that's uh, what it looks like. So we'll do a couple more right around this lip. And then obviously we need one or two up here to kind of hold it in place, but kind of gives you guys the, the idea of what we're working with. If 
Perfect, look at that. Beauty. I think we'll just put one on each side here and then one up here. Clip that off. So we'll put one here, we'll put one here. The rest of this looks really good. Well, I don't know, this tool is breaking all my rivets. I'm not sure why. I just keep breaking them. Uh, if anybody knows uh, of a better tool, a better way to do this, with plastic rivets, let me know. I am blowing through rivets and I, so I need to order a big box of them or something off of Amazon. This is the store I went to only had these these multi packs, which isn't what we need. But we'll might have to dip into some of them. You know, it's like sometimes it just snaps into place, sometimes it doesn't. This is the last one of this pack, and we've only done one fender. Definitely gonna need some some more of these to do the other fenders. There's another one for about 50 50 on these dumb things. I don't know if you just have to be really gentle on it. Look at that. That one just went in like nothing. We can just snap these off. There we go. Fender extender for like 25, 30 bucks a fender. Well, maybe we'll put one more up here so we don't want to rip this off if we bump a tree. <clears throat> oh yeah, we didn't put any up there. I put one there, but not there or there. Okay, let's get a couple more in here since this is working pretty good for us. Now these inner fender liners are gonna have to go when we get the 40s on anyways. So I'm not too worried about getting them included in the rivets, but uh, if you're not putting new fender liners in, you might wanna, might wanna do that. But we're gonna need some extra clearance. A dud, another dud. You can kind of feel it uh, flare out because it really doesn't take much effort when it flares out. And if you start putting a lot of pressure on it, it's not going to flare and it's going to snap. See there, I can just feel it flaring and then it snaps off. There we go, look at that, nice and tight. Beauty. Whew, that looks good, guys. Okay, let's check out these rock blocks while we're at it. I really need a uh, workbench, and uh, we're gonna be installing these soon, too, if you wanna see some more mod installs. These are Oracle's new side view mirror ditch lights. These are really slick. They go, they replace the outer shell of your uh, mirrors, and you get these nice lights that'll kinda shine in front to the side of your rig. What do we got in here? Oh, look at that, some candy. Keep your uh, blood sugar up while you're working on this. So we've got some bits and pieces here. 2020 plus, check the contents, install video, scan. Can we just include instructions on here? I just hate having to use my phone all the time. Fragile, what could possibly be fragile in a box with mud flaps on it? More trash, 
trash, more trash. We'll close these up before we stab ourselves. What else we got in here before we get too far along? Some beefy looking bracketry here. Another one of these brackets. We got tons of little screws. Oh, there's the uh, there's the thumb screws. If you want to take these off, these aren't permanently bolted on but man oh boy we got a lot of a lot of hardware to go through here some more brackets this is two pieces so the material of these is sort of like a an ABS plastic with a bit of bit of flex in it Bunch of these little guys. We need a garage makeover. Actually, you need, we know what? We need a bigger garage. We need a huge garage, one that I can actually get the Jeeps in because my uh, entrance is only like six foot eight. None of the Jeeps fit in here except for this one. The red Jeep is extremely low. So here's our, I'm gonna guess these are extra long JT. So these are our rear fenders, I'm gonna guess. And these are our front ones because they have the little cutout notch for the Rubicon fender flares, or in our case, our Mojave fender, not fender flares, our Mojave rock sliders. So these will kind of go on like something like this, right? So I've got a little, little cutout However, this goes on these brackets, and there's a little cutout for the so they can sit back like that. This will really help keep from chucking rocks up. The front ones will help from keep will help keep from the can't talk help from keep help keep. Uh, this is not a good day to talk. It'll uh, the front ones will help us with rocks being flung up and hitting our hinges and our fenders, but the rear ones. These big suckers. These are the front ones. These big guys. We'll go in the back. I'll show you. And this, when we get our uh, when we get our lift on and our forties, this will help keep us legal. And then if we go somewhere we wanna, we don't care so much. Look at that. So they'll stick out somehow. They will stick out, hang down, give us some more coverage over our new forties. They'll be wider so that we're not sticking out, chucking rocks at people behind us, and uh, hopefully keep the law enforcement satisfied with our our Jeep modifications. Problem with uh, not having a shop and quickly changing weather, it's pouring rain. So I'm gonna take a little break. Hopefully it stops raining all over everything. All right. Much better weather out today. Way less rain, a little warmer, a little bit windy, but perfect for finishing off this project. So, and uh, then we'll finish off the project and we'll get the fender flares, whatever they're called, fender flare extensions on the front. We're gonna put some, uh, we're gonna attach all this together and kind of assemble the backing plate so it's stronger, I guess. And then uh, we've got these big brackets that bolt on somewhere somewhere <laughs> I think if we go take a look they somehow bolt to something under here let me uh somehow bolt Ooh. the dirt falling off um they somehow bolt to something under here I gotta look at the uh, PDF instructions here real quick sometimes we got to read the instructions guys line plate a with B and with the flap this figure F line plate A with the flat. Here appears to be a 13 mil holding this little bracket on. 
we're going to use to mount to. This bracket should go over top of that like that. And we need support bracket, which looks as if it goes on flat side like this. See that there? With some hardware with three quarter inch bolts. This will attach like this and this will need to line up with that for some additional bracing. So let's put this on this side because the tire is going to be on this side. We don't want this sticking out and hitting it for some oddball reason. If you prefer your team yellow or team red, there Get yourself one of these. Oop. Get yourself a power ratchet. Because <laughs> they are awesome. I haven't used the Milwaukee one, but I hear good things about it. But I've been liking my DeWalt one. I don't feel like it needs to be crazy tight because we've got this bolt here kind of half holding it in place. Handy that Jeep has these little bolt holes right here for us. A little bit better. Let me get this on here. Do this side up a little bit. Hopefully these clear my 40 inch tires. When we stuff them, but they should because they'll go forwards as they go up. So we need to make, and we don't have the red fenders or flat mud flaps, we need to make this look like this. So we've got a mud flap and then we've got these support pieces that go on here. So this goes on here like this. This goes on here like this. And once all that's on, this looks like it goes and this piece goes like this. So we're gonna make it a, a sandwich of bolts and connectors and rigid rigidity somehow. Okay, this is not a sponsored video at all. I don't even know Rock Blocks, other than I've heard good things about their company. I think they are located in Idaho, or not Idaho, Utah, I think. Which kind of leads me to some upcoming plans for the New Year's. I am hoping, with all things going as expected, to be at Easter Jeep Safari in April in Moab, Utah. And you guys are going to be down there. Keep an eye out for updates and posts. This should we've got just enough room here. Slide this onto the bracket. There we go. You guys can see that, but I'm trying to find the slots. One in there. See, this is helpful that we already aligned that piece up because now I don't have to mess with this. And it's pouring rain. Get these loosely on here. And then we can, we can adjust them a little bit. There's a, you can slide them in and out depending on how wide your tires are. I don't want to push them on their fender though. So we'll give them a bit of, a bit of space. Straighten them out, and they'll just tighten up these two thumb screws here. Nice and snug. So there we go. There's a good look at 
the extra wide, extra long mud flaps and our rear fender extensions. So now let's move on to the front. Once it stops raining again, put the flares over the foot on the fenders and our, and our little front mud flaps. But look at how much coverage that gives us now from this side. Look at that. Tons of coverage. So way more than our factory our factory wheel sticks out, but we're gonna have we're gonna have our wheels sticking out quite a bit because we've got about two well the axles are about two inches wider on each side than stock, plus we're going with 13 half inch tires. So we're gonna get about probably four more inches of uh poke here. But we got lots of mud flap, lots of fender extension to help keep things as legal as possible. If this rain would just stop for a few minutes, we can finish this off. I'm uh, I'm plugging away at this still. This is day three, trying to squeeze this in between the rain. Now, I got a bracket in my hand for some reason. I'll show you in a second. Um, we're gonna throw the front ones on, the front extenders on, which I think will be a lot easier than putting the back on because we should be able to use all the existing rivet holes. Now, what I wanted to show you with this bracket is uh, I went to put on the mud flaps on my driver's side rear. And well, because we put a three and a half inch exhaust for our Demon V8 supercharged engine in our Gladiator, the bracket doesn't fit because look at where this bracket has to mount. It hits the exhaust. So I'm gonna need to take a little bit more time somewhere along the line uh, here shortly and cut a big notch in this bracket and probably reinforce it somehow so that it can kind of go over top of that exhaust pipe and fit there and have our mud flap hanging down. So I'm gonna leave this off for the time being. I took the other mud flap off as well so that we're not just driving around with one mud flap. We don't actually need them on while the Jeep is still lowered and not big tires, but I assembled the other side here off camera. It was pretty straightforward and, and easy, but what we need to do now is we need to assemble our front mud flaps. Those should fit because we haven't really modified anything over there that would interfere with that. So I'm gonna assemble these real quick and we're also going to put our other fender extensions on. Now I haven't put the driver's side on. I'm trying to get one side done here for you guys to see the exact process and how that comes together. But the front one, so the front one should just clip right in uh, to the existing holes. We shouldn't have to drill any extra holes for this. It should all line up because this is essentially the same as a Wrangler up front. Front LT, front left. Not the one we need. Front RT, front right. So this should be the same as the one that we've put on the back. And all we should have to do in theory is pop out existing plastic rivets underneath there. You can see there's holes that line up with where the rivets are. So these guys come out nice and easy. Don't fight us too much. I think I need a tool with a little bit more width on it. I don't have a, I think there's a wider trim tool you can buy. Now we just had all these rivets replaced when we did the engine swap because we had all the fender liners off and you need these out to get the fender liners out. So these ones aren't your OEM pop, pop rivets. All right. Oh, okay, it doesn't go in the, oh, we didn't need to pull the lower one out. Darn, oh, oh, put another one back in. Miscalculated.
these rivets, I tell you, very, very temperamental with snapping off. Like 50 50. Sometimes they compress like that, and sometimes they just snap. Didn't even impress. Let's put together our other. Let's put together our other mud flap. Yeah, let's go take a look because this should bolt up and use some retainer clips in the package. It looks like we need to use this hole. And then this hole, this hole. This looks like it goes like this. We punch out the hole for the rock rail. So this looks like it goes like this. And we're going to knock this hole out for the rock rail. Slide it over the rock rail and use these three holes. Seems to be working. I just don't want to end up bleeding all over myself here by going too far. And we're going to need our little clip remover tool again. Pull out these clips that we're going to use. Well, that went somewhere way up the driveway. <laughs> it's a tight fit. That's not a tight fit. It seemed to be a lot easier to take on and off the rear. There we go. it up. There we go. Got her. All right, let's get this last one here. That kind of matches our, our line. It'll help keep rocks off our hinges, our doors. I've had them hit our windows. Okay, let's pull the demonator out for a better look at our mud flaps and fender extensions. Ah. And remote start does work with this swap. And uh, yeah, we gotta, gotta do this side still. Can't wait to. Uh, Get some more mods on this thing. The bigger axles, 40 inch tires, <laughs> gonna be awesome. Let's just spin this around so we can get some light on this and see. The wreck in my garden. It's kind of weird uh, driving a Jeep with an extra three feet or so. We got the eco diesel right there. <laughs> we should put some fender extenders on that so we're covering the so we're covering the the extra bit sticking out on the tire. Have you guys heard the demonator yet? If you haven't, go check out the build series. Supercharged 840 horsepower V8 out of a Dodge Demon in a gladiator. That's why we're calling it the Demonator. So there we go, guys. There is a look at our fender extensions and mud flaps. They look a little out of place with factory tires, but you know, once we get the bigger tires lifted, axles, everything sticking out, I think that'll work pretty good. 
So let's have a quick look at some measurements. You guys are going to want to know for sure up near the top, about an inch and a half over stock and far more than we need for the tires and uh, two and a quarter inches towards the bottom, which I think is uh, probably going to get, it's probably the best place to have the most coverage because it's where you see it from behind and where you see the tire poke if, you know, people are behind you. And then we've got even more, kind of carries this line really nice down here and we're over two and a half inches at the bottom. And let's see. And then we've got a solid, the extra long, extra wide, almost 13 and a half inches from the bottom of the fender. Sticks out nice and far, 10 inch wide coverage. Well, at the bottom of it, but almost 12 and, 12 and a half inches. And then we've got the same thing here. Two and a half inches near the bottom. I think the back is where it counts the most. And uh, then we've extended, same thing here, 14 and a half inches all the way to the bottom. And at our widest point, we've got 12 inches of coverage. Extreme recon fenders and mud flaps on a gladiator, stock gladiator. I don't know, what do you guys think? There's a rear view. Good rear view shot from behind. Looks uh, better than a Bronco Raptor extensions, that's for sure. Nice and sturdy. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of this kind of combination. It looks pretty factory. Pretty happy with how this turned out. I'm gonna finish up the other side. Uh, don't miss the rest of the Demonator build series because we're putting the big axles, 40s, lift, all the fun stuff now that we've got the big V8 in there. Don't miss that, hit subscribe. Watch the rest of the series. It's coming up in a couple weeks. We're going back to Epic Adventure Outfitters to finish that off. And if you like this mod, like this video, or just wanna help me out a little bit, hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below. Appreciate it a ton. I'll see you guys next week.